So first of all, Alabama Representative Jenny Schaefer proposed a uh, born alive bill. Now, technically, you could even argue that this isn't about abortion. To a degree, it's not. But we'll get into the relevancy here in a second. You may have heard that I was talking about this with, with Becky just a few minutes ago, and we kind of you know, talked about it, uh, skimmed over it a little bit, just about the status and whether or not it was going to pass or not. So for those of you who don't know what exactly this does, the, the bill by Representative Schaefer, if a baby shows a sign of life, in other words, it's, his little limbs are moving or the, the baby coughs or, or breathes or, or makes some kind of noise or whatever, if there's a sign of life in a baby after an abortion has taken place, so not connected to the mother, not in the womb. We're talking about a baby that was inside the mother and now is outside the mother, not even with the umbilical cord connected. If a botched abortion takes place and somehow the baby survives, and by the way, there are cases of this happening. There are children that survive abortions and some of them wind up growing up and, and being able to lead full, fulfilling lives and, and lead a completely normal, healthy life. And unfortunately, there are also probably cases uh, that, you know, I don't think that there's a whole lot of cases that you can look back and, and look directly at this, but that's because it doesn't go reported and, and because there's no laws to protect children in this situation that after a birth take place, the doctor would execute it because the whole point of an abortion is to kill the baby. And if you have failed in killing the baby, well, then the abortion has been botched, which, by the way, it is a fascinating thing to think about that the only time an abortion can fail, the only time an abortion can mess up or something goes wrong in an abortion and an abortion does not take place is when the baby survives. Every single successful abortion ends in a death. And for people on the left to suggest that the baby is not alive is logically inconsistent because, well, how would it survive an abortion if it wasn't alive to begin with? How, how would a child even survive? Because to survive, you have to be alive in the first place. A dead person can't survive an event because they're not alive to, to be able to continue on living. And so even the terminology logically doesn't pan out when you apply this logic when you talk about this. And, and so the born alive bill, you would think to a Democrat, would be common sense that because they are saying that the life is somehow conferred upon a person when they make the short journey eight inches up the birth canal, which granted makes no sense, but that is their argument, that once it goes through the birth canal, then it's a baby. And, and they constantly accuse people on the pro-life side of saying, oh, you're, you're only pro-fetus, you're not pro-baby, because once the baby comes here, you don't care about it, which is absurd on a number of levels. The vast majority of children's hospitals and the vast majority of adoption agencies have a religious tie to it. There are specific religious organizations devoted to helping women that are considering abortion instead choose adoption. So there's a, a myriad of reasons why that's a bogus talking point. But even if you were to accept it, you would think that this would be a bill that would have bipartisan support that both sides could look at and the Democrats are looking at is like, well, yeah, we're in favor of that because once the baby's born, yeah, we're all about the baby. We're, we're very pro-baby then, but they're not. The Democrats in the state of Alabama are opposing this and there has been similar legislation proposed all over the country that says something similar. And the only other talking point that I have heard to try to counter this and say why Democrats would be against it is that they will say, well, because it's, it's not really happening. Well, if it's not happening, then it should be real easy for you to sign it, right? Because there are botched abortions. We know that that's taking place. And we know that there are people that are here today that are survivors of botched abortion. So we know that botched abortions are taking place. Their argument is, well, yeah, but if that happens, then common sense would, would take over and the doctor would, of course, take care of the child and provide it with medical care. Okay, well, if that's the case, then it, I don't see why you would be opposed to this bill in the first place, because let's just say there's, I don't know, 10,000 abortion doctors 
in the United States, and 9,999 of them would never do something like that. This bill is to protect maybe the one that doesn't do that. You're telling me there's not even a chance, not even a possibility that somebody in this predicament would do this, and, and we're just going to rely on them and, and say that there's absolutely nothing wrong. We're not going to provide a protection just in case for that child if it survives an abortion. Well, if that's the case, if that's your argument, then you should be in favor of the bill too, because it's just a precautionary measure in case somebody were to, to do that. It, instead of it being a murky area, it makes it crystal clear that under the law, these children would be able to survive. And this is especially relevant when you are looking at one side of the, the Democrat Party that defended a guy, Governor Ralph Northam, that was saying, yeah, what, what would happen if there's a botched abortion is that we'll keep the child comfortable and, and while it's over there sleeping in the other room, then the, a conversation would ensue about what we're going to do with the child. Um, yeah, well, this would end that conversation because the child would be protected. And so there are at least some people out there, Ralph Northam being one of them, that is saying that, yeah, after the child is born, well, then we, we might still have to talk about whether or not you would still want that baby in a botched abortion. And so there we know for a fact there are at least some people that believe that that should be something that you can consider just killing that child. So why wouldn't we want to have these laws in place to protect him? Because ultimately, anything that even remotely accepts the death-worshipping cult that is the abortion lobby and Planned Parenthood, the Democrats will not touch. That's what it really does boil down to. And so with this, there are... People, unfortunately, Democrats in the House and the Senate that strongly oppose this because they don't want to be seen as anti-abortion, which again doesn't make sense because we're not even talking about abortion at this point. This is post-birth. This would be infanticide. And so this was met with unanimous opposition by the Democrats. Not a single Alabama Democrat voted in favor of it. It is absolutely disgusting. And I think the reason that it bothers them so much and the, one of the reasons that they really don't want to support it is because it uses the Democrats' own flawed logic against them. Their argument for why abortion should be legal doesn't work in this scenario. Because if you're admitting that a child that is aborted, for example, at four or five months into the pregnancy and somehow survives, well, that's a pretty good indication that you shouldn't be killing these children. That's a pretty good indication that these, child, these children, even if you're a pro-abortion person, is viable and can sustain themselves even outside the womb. I mean, yeah, it's going to be an uphill battle, just like a preemie. But the point is, if that can take place, it throws a monkey wrench into their absurd, idiotic argument that somehow this is not a human being. And that is why, ultimately, they don't want to support it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to touch it. They don't want to think about it. Because ultimately, if they admit that these children need protection, they are admitting that a person's life is more than just whether or not the woman wants it or not. That there is an intrinsic value in these children, and if they admit that, they understand that their argument for why abortion should remain legal falls apart. <laughs> So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.